Welcome to class, Prime Fam. Today, we're gonna take you through my squat and deadlift lower body workout. It's our strength day on the Prime program. And Professor Teets today is gonna teach you proper hip hinging in your squat patterns, which almost everyone does wrong. We just released a private how-to video on this on our group coaching website, but we're gonna actually teach you guys some of the basics of this and how to engage your glutes more in the squat, which will help you with depth and better positioning and force output, aka strength, we're also gonna take you through uh, my whole workout. We got some comp squats today, some beltless, or no, excuse me, some pause deadlifts today, and then we got some heavy ass walking lunges, which I'm gonna go real, real heavy on. We're gonna talk about the importance of single limb heavy work, and then we're just gonna kind of walk you through every exercise, but first we're gonna start off with a kick ass little edit. getting tall in the squat and having a good amount of back extension to resist that flexion like we've talked about in previous videos, but at the same time hinging and loading your glutes. So there's a big difference between trying to load your ass by like overarching your back like this and actually truly hinging at the hips. But the problem is, is most people who try to hinge collapse the back extenders and then they fold forward. Likewise, people who try to stay really upright overextend and don't actually load their glutes and then they have issues with depth, mobility, etc. So I'm gonna show you really quickly what we want to achieve from the side view. Upper back extended and tall, but notice ribs are distended, low back's arched. So we gotta bring that in, pull these abs on while we do that huge breath in here. But then the key is maintaining that while I hinge my hips, okay? So as you're going down into the squat, you basically want to do this motion at the same time you bend your knees. How much is going to be depending on the individual, but you basically just want the bar to come over midfoot. Now I have an entire breakdown of how to achieve this for group coaching and one-on-one -on -one members. It escapes this video because it's like a 13 minute video. I, can't, I don't have time to explain that here. But you want to practice some drills to get your hinge down while maintaining that upper back position. So I'll show you really quickly on the bar. Watch the hips more than anything. So when I walk this out, this is wrong right here. This is not glutes loaded, that's back extended. Okay, likewise, this is wrong. That's back folded. That's not gonna do anything, you're just gonna pitch over. What we want to achieve is upper back tight and tall, abs on, big breath in, hinge. Okay guys, so just finished up our uh, squats for the day. So last block in the prime program, we had tempo squats, built up some, to some heavy weights for a tempo. Uh, and actually, Andrew had that also on his program, this yeah. block. 
Pam, you did good today. Hit, what, 518? Fucking clean, legit ass pause too. So uh, I was doing comp squats though, just typical strength volume, so to say, you know, that five repetition range, had some back down sixes. Now moving on to pause deadlifts. The goal with these pause deadlifts is to create positional strength. So when I break this off the floor, I'm gonna pause low for a long period of time. That's gonna reinforce my back positioning, my core tightness, my lat engagement, my leg positioning, and then I'm finishing. So the goal here is not super heavy. We want these to move clean. I got one client, you guys have seen in my videos, also doing this on this program, Leon, shout out. He just hit 705 fucking pounds a day on his pause deadlift with a clean ass fucking pause, easy as shit. I'm into that clip. Uh, I'm gonna hope to even get into the like low 600s today. We got a few weeks of progression, so I don't wanna blow my load early. We gotta start light, progress through the block, but I am hitting up a single like RP 9.5, 10 at the end of the block. Okay, so finish up deadlifts, hit a really clean, long pause, single. Uh, setting up this block good. We still got three weeks of progression, so I was really happy with 628. That this week one on the start of this prime block is amazing. Uh, then we did back down, beltless deficit deadlifts. Uh, sets of five with 529 pounds off a of four inch deficit. And I got these thick ass fuckers on, so it's actually a little bit more. But now's the fun of the day. We get to do some walking lunges. This has been such a fun exercise for me, this block. I'm gonna aim for maybe like 245 today, but I am kind of gassed. My goal is at some point, I don't know when, I wanna hit 315 for really clean, controlled reps. We'll see what I get today. Okay, so got 245 on the walking lunges. Had a little mishap with this damn rope. It's, it's cramped in this gym, very small gym. Um, but moving on now to our next bit of single limb work. Um, so I always do kind of like a pressing exercise, like a lunge or a split squat, whatever, with a uh, pulling or a hip extension exercise. So in this case, we're going single limb barbell RDLs. Now this is a more advanced progression. A lot of people are better off just doing dumbbells, kettlebells, altering range of motion. You don't need to go all the way to the floor. These are really difficult. Now, here's the funny thing about single limb strength work. For some reason, there's a lot of dogma behind it. A lot of people think it's like fluff and doesn't do much, or other people put like way too much stock into it where they're like, all you should do is single limb work, which is really, really stupid. Both sides are wrong. So what you need to understand about especially heavy single limb or unilateral work is that it really helps kind of facilitate stability in the same ranges of motion that we're performing. This is a broken down deadlift variation. The lunge is a broken down squat variation. And there is benefit. And for some reason, when we think hypertrophy work, no one ever says, oh, let's just only do barbell curls. People know that getting some unilateral dumbbell curls in there or various forms of table curls with your single arm is a good way to get a good mind-muscle connection and to create a new stimulus. Same thing on here. Why am I gonna just go do a bunch of strength work? I've already gotten that adaptation earlier in the day. Let's work on something different. So here, I'm going for a single limb barbell RDLs. These are really fucking hard, so keeping it light at 135. I like lower repetition ranges here. No more than eights usually, maybe as high as tens if you're really good at them. I usually get them down as low as like five or four reps too. The key here, 
lock in this back as you hinge on the other one. And you'll see I'll probably bottle these because I haven't done these in a long time now. So, all the weight on this leg, unlock the knee, back glute engage, real slow, abs engage. I get on this video, the more it helps spread the video. I'll see you guys in the next one.